Friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. Tell them I said hello and enjoy your discount. Best case scenario, I'm working in a very high-end home. The people that work here and install this paper are professionals. I have come to the assumption in my career that when I work in a very exclusive home, that the wallpaper was probably put up correctly. You know what I mean? Look at this. We're dealing with a perfect circumstance here. And so you learn how to gauge your wallpaper removal jobs accordingly. So let me take the rest of this down. You like that sink? I'm pointing the blade. I'm pointing the blade under the metal. 
See that? I'm trying to... This apparatus was installed after the wallpaper. And so... Now, we just have to remove the paper with that in mind. Otherwise, the paper will tear. So we want a clean cut, right? Let's see if we can do that. So far, it broke. See, I'm pulling the paper toward the toilet paper holder so I can benefit from having cut it. Hmm. That didn't break. Gotta do that again. just to show you how easy it really can be. Aside from your disastrous wallpaper removal projects. Now if it gets difficult, if it starts resisting, here's what you do. Turn the wallpaper right up against the wall. You see what I mean? Like, don't pull this way I pull them that way. See? Do you see that? The wallpaper is not in the corner there. I haven't done anything to this sheet. The wallpaper separated from the corner because the installer did not slice the corner. This is an obtuse angle. You'd be silly. You'd have a better chance of keeping your wallpaper in the corner with a 90 than an obtuse. But even with 90s, cut your corners. This is what happens. 
you get lift off. It's not professional. That's interesting. The outlet was installed over the wallpaper. Usually that's not the case. But if it is, you want to slice it so you get nice clean tears, long tears of paper. You agree? Oh. Yes, I do. Oh. You would agree, these are a pain. Now, to go around the sink would require lots of time and energy. So I put moving discs underneath the sink, disconnected the plumbing, and decided to move it out. Do you agree? Who wants to spend the time? It's two hours minimally behind the sink. Hello. 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 Okay. We're ready to prep. The only problem with this room is that the installer penetrated the sheetrock in some cases when he did his double cut. Not too happy about that. I can, I can hear that line, his cut line. So I'm not crazy about that, but otherwise he did a very good job. So the wallpaper came down in full sheets. So if any one of my viewers wants to repurpose this wallpaper, just give me a call at 1-800-I'm, I apostrophe M, Kidden, K-I-D-D-N. Okay, the new mural that's going up, uh, that's what you're looking at. Just so you know, this stuff is not cheap. Very nice, very nice. I take my words back against the guy. This is coming right off. Look at that. I love it. Okay, <clears throat> so what this is, is paste that has formed a line at the seam. And you can understand why. When the fellow smoothed it out with his smoother, like believe, and then he cut through it, what he did when he cut through it, he pushed against the wall, forming a little tunnel into which paste poured itself. And that's why you have that, that's what it is, it's paste. He did not, I take the words back, he did not penetrate the sheet back. My mistake. But if you want to give a perfect job to your customer, go around and get rid of the line. Wait till that 
Neutralis. The reason why you want to fill these little holes because you don't want to see them through the paper, right? That's all. Those are staying. And I think we're good. Oh, there's one more. Now, if you don't like the way that looks, you take your five and one. And you just make sure you pull it tight. Okay. By the time we're ready, you just wipe them over with a wet sponge and you're ready to go. Anything here? No? Okay, I think we're ready to hang. For the new installers, I suggest, it's just a suggestion, you obviously do what you wish. Lay the mural out to see what you got. Right away, now this doesn't come in the instructions. Right away we learn that it is a repeat horizontal pattern. This bird and this bird are apparently on every sheet. You see the tail of this bird here? Same as here. And there's your other bird. So we have a straight match of a repeating pattern. Now, the other thing we want to learn is if it's an overlap splice cut or what's called a double cut. Very important to know because if we do have a double cut, if our total width of two sheets is 42 inches and we're overlapping and cutting in the middle and we lose an inch, well, we don't have that width anymore. We have to subtract for the overlap, okay? So the way to do that is to simply put the pieces up against each other and see what do you think? Is this an overlap? I'd be shocked if this is not an overlap and it doesn't look like it is. Okay, it is an overlap. It's very little overlap. So let me show you what I mean. So we're trying to determine if it's a butt joint. Now, take a look at the edge of the sheet. What do you notice about that? You see how it's wrinkly? You see those wrinkles in the middle there? Okay, there goes the cat. You see these wrinkles? This is from packaging. You see these wrinkles? Typically with an overlap, you, you, get, you get to cut that off. And so that's scrap, but it, if I do have an overlap here, it's not much of an overlap. So, um, I'm not very happy about that. So you see those two little, two little marks right there? You see these on the edge? And you see these two over here? Well, that, that's your overlap, folks. That's it. I, I find that that's problematic. You know, if you're going to give a customer uh, a $2,000 mural with shipping and handling the price of the materials, give them an inch. This is absurd to give them such a small bleed. Okay, so we have an overlap product and we don't have much room to play with. So now we know what we got to do. Now, peel and stick is coming around. Look at the ease with which the waxed backing separates. Look at this. Look how nice and easy. It's pretty good, right? I'm very happy about that because normally I'll use clamps 
on that end of my table, but not the case here. Now, if you're hanging peeling, peel and stick and your wall is ready, here's what I suggest you do. You take a mixture of isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, you cut it down with water by 30%, so you do a mixture of water and alcohol and you rub down your walls. And that will remove any residue that will prevent this stuff from sticking to your walls. Okay, it's just a tip for you. So where are we going to put out a first sheet? Well, <clears throat> right there, my first sheet will fall, the right edge will fall on my laser. I have a 24 and a half inch wide sheet of wallpaper. And you can see the previous installer I was thinking along the same lines when he drew his line. I guess when he installed this, there weren't things such as laser levels. What do you think?
getting behind the toilet. Now, I have a smoother that's a third the width of this. Actually, it's more. So when I get down behind that toilet, look, I'm halfway over on the left, and I'm halfway over on the right. Because you, you need to smooth that out. Spencer, I don't have a wide smooth. Okay. Get a rolling pin. Yes, from your kitchen. Take it on both sides and roll down your wallpaper. You'd have to be crazy not to cut this. Look what's happening already. See the space there? Okay. No matter how much you do this, it's always going to do that. Get it? No matter how much you do this, it's always going to do that. Cut it. When you slice it, you'll see that the stress relieved reveals the real story. That's how much it wanted to separate. That's a lot. But wait, make sure when you cut it that the top on a ceiling like this, that the top is longer than this piece, so that when you push it up, you're going to overlap this piece onto this. So that when you're installing the top sheet, it slightly overlaps the bottom, just slightly. See, if it were the other way around, you'd see the edge of the red paper, right? So the top, in this case, is slightly overlapping the bottom sheet. This was not easy. Putting the second sheet up and matching the pattern with a slight overlap. I'm just slightly overlap. Look at how ridiculously thin that is. It's ridiculous. The installer has to be excellent. This is not for a newer, a newer installer or a beginner. So we want to cut this piece first so that this piece can overlap this way without being tensioned by this piece.
With peel and stick, you gotta get these air pockets out right away. No waiting. And that's your seam. With peel and stick, you don't want to start on the product in the middle. Try to get to a corner fast. It's easy to make dents in this material. Obviously this is separate from the ceiling. When you wallpaper a ceiling, you have to deal with the, the pattern not necessarily meeting up. Now we can do tricks by cutting some of these branches out and overlaying them from the wall onto the ceiling, which I've shown you in other videos. Okay, I can honestly tell you this was not easy. You see, you're wrapping around from a short wall, right? But then you can't forget, it goes a lot higher than its adjoining counterpart to the left. Now, when we're done, we might do something. You see, those connect. These two birds are a little on top of each other. Not crazy about that, but we'll see what we got at the end. Most important part right here. It's worth the work. Just make sure it all lines up and bust those seams as soon as possible. Get those air pockets out to the nearest exit. Nearest exit. 
I wet it down so I don't get friction making marks on the vinyl. Okay, moving right along, I washed it down. Now, two things. Number one, if you get this, let it expand, let it constrict, leave it alone. It was smaller before, now it's 10 inches, before it was only two inches. I'll tell you what the remedy is. It's simply a hair blower, uh, with a little heat on there, pull it away, smooth it out. You'll see it shrinking as you put the heat on it. And then we're missing a bird, right? So we're gonna take a bird out of scrap and we're going to insert the bird in there. We're not going to leave that without the bird. Okay, so with peel and stick, very important. Let's say you're not matching up here. You can't pull it off and reposition the whole thing. Or with any wallpaper. You just want to address the mismatch locally. Don't pull it all off just to address a little mismatch here. So you see this is mismatched, right? So I'm gonna push it up. And then these wrinkles I'll work out this way and this way. It's a big mistake to keep taking the, the product off of the wall. Because if you do that, you're gonna pull the paint off with it. You're gonna make the peel and stick product not usable. You see here again? We address it, we pull it in. And then we adjust to its right. Or if you're hanging the other way, you adjust to its left. So if you just pull the whole sheet off to address one mismatch, oh, what a waste of time. Somebody you, somebody used to, somebody I know used to do that, and he's speaking right now. But now, look at the beauty. Look at that coming along. Isn't that gorgeous? Come on, you can say it, say it's gorgeous. 
So I finished this side of the door frame with a sheet that went up to the ceiling there. And then I come to this little part right here with another sheet. What's left is that little triangle. But since, fortunately for me, it cuts off at this corner of this frame, I can go over to my last wall or my beginning wall and come around here now and finish it off at this corner and not have to worry about matching up a kill point above the doorway. All I have to do now is finish these last two sheets on the ceiling and this job is ready for cleanup. Now that I have the time to explain this, let me just show you why you want a one eighth of an inch overlap in your corners. So this piece on this wall overlaps onto this wall and into the next. Let me show you why that is. I'm going to push this sheet over here and then you'll see exactly why. Now you see why the first sheet or in any corner, one of the sheets overlaps onto the other side. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The wallpaper you see in the corner is actually extended into the corner and then onto the white wall. So that when I flap over my adjacent sheet wallpaper, oh boy, what a beautiful seam finish is that. And that's why we do it. And we do it all the way down because we anticipate in corners that corners are never going to give us a perfect 90. Therefore, if it doesn't give us a perfect 90, how could this branch perfectly meet up? If you have to, use a little water under your peeling stick in order that you're able to move it. Some guys use Windex, believe it or not. But there's a liability involved, so I'm not telling you what to use, but peeling stick can get very difficult if you don't use something to help you. So I cut it with this metal thing. No room for error there, right? But I didn't smooth it with the metal thing. You gotta use plastic.
go right over the pipe. We're gonna stab it right over the pipe. Bring it down to the pipe. And so now, we're gonna just cut along the pipe. Let's get... Okay, very nice. Okay, again, a little cut incision. Stress there, no problem. Okay. Okay. I tell you, man, this is hard. It's a good way to break your back. Good to do this with a semi dull blade when you're reaching like this because when you stab yourself not if you do but when you do you will not open the flesh now i gotta make believe i'm righty turn the knife around and hope that i can get it through the, the right place Yes, educatedly, like along a straight line, like I just did there, instead of using the trim to give you the straight line, you can, you can pretty much surmise what is the straight line. Okay, let's see how that looks. Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right. Okay, first of all, do you... 